But it didn't happen. So we'll just have an adult sermon. <laughs> Look what I got here. What is that? Can you see it? It's a piece of concrete. Well, what's the big deal about a piece of concrete? Well, my son Joel, sitting there when he was in college, he went on a trip to Russia. And while he was in Russia, he also got to Germany. And just at that particular time, and we all know about this, the Berlin Wall was coming down. Oh, Putin didn't like that too well. But anyway, this piece of concrete caught his attention. <coughs> because, and I don't think he knew I've kept it all these years, but I have. But on this piece of concrete, on the other side, there was a cross. The cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. So in that land where Christianity is definitely on the wane, people do not attend church, and tearing down that evil, evil wall, there at the bottom someplace or another, my son spied this piece of concrete, and the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ was there. A piece of concrete giving witness to all who saw it. Today our text will be, He, Jesus, was tempted by the devil. The devil. That will be our text. <coughs> there is no devil? Well, then where do we have all the misery and woe? And in this world, the human cruelty and injustice? The fiendish war, wars that are going on right now? Bloodshed all over the world? Try to persuade a shepherd who has a flock of sheep and those sheep are trembling with fright and are torn and bleeding hey there is no wolf and try to persuade the police the police in a city that there are no robberies or murders and we know that they are all over the place, especially when we think of our day and age that are frequently committed by criminals. And then we would say, there are no criminals. But do not to try to persuade us that there is no devil. The devil is everywhere. To this day, the devil conceals his hoof, and under the beautiful garment he gives men poison to drink from a golden goblet. The devil certainly has given Putin, Putin a huge drink from a golden goblet. The golden goblet that's just full of evil and hatred and cruelty and pain and greed and you name it all. And sin is there everywhere where he is responsible for the lives of men, women, and children being killed. There is a devil. There's no doubt about it. And he is ruling he is ruling in the heart of Putin and a lot of other people that are under his control. There's no doubt about it. You know, if you believe in Jesus as your Lord and Savior, well, then you got to believe in the devil, too. 
And the devil was up to no good in our gospel reading. He was up to no good at all because of all things he thought he could go and seduce the Lord Jesus Christ into sin. And he tempted Jesus for 40 days out there in the wilderness. Three times the devil came to him. One time he offered him, hey, here's some good food. Everybody likes good food. And then he tempted him with, hey, look at all these kingdoms. They can all be yours. Uh, I guess that's kind of what Putin's up to. And then the protection of the guardian angels. And the temptations came to absolutely no avail. Because Jesus knew exactly how to deal with that evil one. He dealt with him with the word of God. Each time Jesus came back and said, Hey you, it is written. And do not put the Lord God to a test. What could the devil do? The only thing the devil could do is put his tail between his legs, and I don't know if the devil has a tail, and saunter away and wait until an opportune time. You see, he really doesn't give up. He is always waiting. Always waiting to put people to the test. And the opportune time was every day Jesus had to deal with that evil one, the devil. And the high point, the very highest point of that took place when our Lord Jesus Christ was in the Garden of Gethsemane. And we remember what he went through in that garden. He knew what was coming. And he was praying to his heavenly Father, remove this cup from me, not my will, but thy will be done. And also sweating, as it were, of the very drops of blood. But here again he was stood. He was stood the evil one, the devil. Jesus won. Won again. He stood steadfast and willingly, willingly he went the road of the ugly cross. All of us know this Bible passage, right? Be self-controlled and alert. Your enemy, he's not a friend, he's an enemy. The devil prowls around like a roaring lion and is looking for someone to devour. And he isn't looking just for anyone, but he's looking for one of God's people. The devil's mission is to take the Christian from Christianity to the place of unbelief. Unbelief. Thank God for Ash Wednesday. All of you, I think, well, I don't know how many of you were, but you, the sign of the cross on the forehead, right? To mark you as one redeemed by Christ the crucified. And Ash Wednesday in the season of Lent is all about remembering what our Lord did for each and every one of us. He didn't take a back seat. He didn't take the easy road. But he went to that ugly place called the place of the skull. Who, who likes the place of the skull? No one! But Jesus went there and he died for the sins of the whole world. Kind of, kind of have a hard time saying this, but he even died for the sins of Putin. And if Putin would change his ways and come to Lord Jesus Christ in repentance and in faith and in the Lord would say come and inherit the kingdom prepared for you 
But I don't know if Putin's going to do that, but I hope that he will. And that's the truth, and that we believe. We have a loving and forgiving God. So we have the devil. Well, who wants to be on his side? I don't think so. Do you want to be on the side with many people who are? They're with the devil. You know, they may not, they may not think so, but if you are not a child of God, then you're in the camp of the devil. And what does it get you? Hell. It gets you hell. And a lot of people say, well, God's a loving God. He wouldn't do that. He wouldn't send anybody to hell, but he, he, he doesn't. People send themselves to hell. Hell's not a good place. It's a place of darkness. It's a place of the fiery furnace. It's a place of the bottomless pit. It's a place where the worm does not die. In other words, people can't die. And that would be the most beautiful thing that you could do in hell is to die and get it over with. And the really, really bad thing about hell is that it lasts forever and ever. So I'll take Jesus. I'll take Jesus. You want to be on his side? Yeah, we better believe it. He wants to give you and me the very best. You know, we don't have a God that wants to give us breadcrumbs. No. He wants to give us the very, very best. And that's as good as it gets. He wants to give us heaven. That beautiful place. I don't know, I can't even begin to imagine how nice that place is. I don't know what you can compare it to. You really can't compare it to anything here. But I was thinking a little bit about this and... Uh, you know, my grandparents, you know, they left the Volga River of Russia. And they came to America. Why did they do that? They came because they were looking for a better life. They were looking for a better life for their children. And that's exactly what Jesus wants for you and for me. He wants us to have that good life. A better life that lasts forever and heaven that he has prepared for you and for me. Oh, I don't know. Every day I'm getting closer to heaven. Age just goes by. I don't know where it went. But heaven, heaven is our home. But not yet. But not yet. But heaven is our home. So while we live, let us fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith through the joy set before him. You know what he did. He endured that ugly cross, scorning its shame, and then he sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. <coughs> Yes, dear people, dear people of St. Paul, heaven is, is our home, but not yet, but it is ours. God grant that to each and every one of you for Jesus' sake. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Our Lord and our Savior.